Hi there everybody, Peter of England here again, um, giving you an update uh, on the case that was heard on the 8th of February. Uh, I'm going to hopefully break this down into three segments of around 10 minutes each, so uh, don't worry, you don't, have to get, uh, um, you don't have to get comfortable for too long. Uh, what I'd like to just mention uh, before we begin is that to come to the court case, uh, I came over from Munich in Germany, where I had been for the month or so prior to the, to the court case. So I came over obviously at my own expense, and um, what I decided to do is to make a point at UK Border Agency Control at Manchester Airport, having flown in on the 1st of, um, of February, Friday evening. Uh, I was there to make a point that I had the prerogative under natural law, or common law, should we say, to enter into my uh, home country, England, without producing any um, photographic identity. And so this is what I did. I came up to the control uh, desk at uh, Manchester Airport, and this was around about 8 o'clock, I think, in the evening, and uh, I presented myself at desk number 3, and spoke to a, a gentleman there, and I explained my situation and said that I would like to enter the country, uh, as was my natural right and uh, uh, authority to do so, unless the UK Border Agency or the Crown had any reason to suspect that I shouldn't uh, enter. We went into a small discussion then about uh, having to prove that I was a naturalised um, being or citizen, um, and he asked for documentation. He repeatedly asked for this, uh, I explained that we weren't going to go down that route and what was it going to take to get me into the country. The long and short of it is I provided details of my public straw man official identity which designates me uh, as a citizen of the UK uh, as far as the Crown's concerned and I gave them the identity details of Alan Peter Michael Smith, date of birth 18th of October 1957. Uh, Luke went away, made some investigations, and around about 15 minutes later, he came back with a smile on his face. He opened the um, channel entry and said, you know, basically, welcome to England. So the point I'm making there is that I proved that you can actually come in without showing an identity document, though I fully understand that the information that I furnished um, only gives them the ability to check that there is a, a, an entry document valid. But equally why I did it, as I explained to Lou, is that I was having to attend a court case. And it was quite important to make a statement that if I'd have given the details, Peter Smith, with the date of birth that I furnished, I would not have been allowed into the United Kingdom. That's quite an important point, because only the official document, tied to the official name, would get you through. If I'd have gone and said, it's Peter Smith, with the stated date of birth, what he would have had to do then, as he intoned, is that he would have had to ask me, do I have any other names, or do I go under a different name? So, that was setting the scene. Uh, six days elapsed, and then um, the due time for arrival at um, Chancellor Crown Court came, and I arrived at the court at nine o'clock on the morning of the 8th, presented myself in the court, and again, all my bags were, were searched. Um, they went through my pens, they went through virtually everything that, that, that I owned, apart from stripping me down, uh, they searched everything. Uh, the schedule for the court case was a commencement at 10.30, uh, but the court case didn't get underway till around about 11 o'clock. This time I come such a, a way uh, from obviously Germany, that I had made the decision that no matter what, that I was going into the courtroom to debate the charges and the identity question. Um, for those people who are not aware, around about two weeks before the appointed court case day, I had furnished a letter of nine pages in length explaining to um, the judge, his, his honour Justice Goldstaub, um, that the identity of the so-called defendant, Peter Smith, was obviously in doubt, and that the Crown, under no circumstances, could find um, Peter Smith. Uh, the burden of proof was on the Crown to furnish those details, 
um, and I left that with them with obviously some background information. On the morning in question, um, the announcement was made, would all those representing Peter Smith now kindly enter the court? So, as I decided I was entering no matter what, I went through the door into the court, stood in front of the judge, greeted everybody with good morning, uh, and then I made an announcement that I was here to represent the legal fiction, straw man, entity known as Peter Smith, um, and that I was Peter of England, I maintain my common law rights and my prerogative under natural law and natural justice to maintain my identity and my, my, my stated uh, appellation and that I had revoked previous identity uh, with, with the state. As far as the judge was concerned, that wasn't really uh, anything that he obviously wanted to hear at all. And so the very next thing uh, was the usher stood up and said, uh, are you Peter Smith? I categorically denied the fact that I was Peter Smith. The judge then said, well, in this particular instance, if you or no one else can show any identification for Peter Smith, then the court will not proceed and we will not go ahead. There was a little bit of debate then, um, internally within the court, uh, and so to facilitate matters, what I then offered to the judge was the fact of what I would term uh, a bleed through. I said to facilitate the proceedings of the mistaken identity of Peter Smith for Alan Peter Michael Smith, what I, Peter of England, was prepared to do was to step into my public straw man identification of Alan Peter Michael Smith to conduct the defence for the mistaken identity of Peter Smith. Upon that, the judge asked me if I had any identification, and therefore I then said, yes, I most certainly had. I explained to the judge that I'd entered into the country the week before, on that Friday, under the name of Alan Peter Michael Smith, and that there was categorically no Peter Smith. He asked if I had a passport, having explained previously that I entered without a passport identity document. So, giving him the passport, or giving it to the uh, clerk of the court, that was taken up, handed to the judge, and by the way, for those of you who are not aware, this was only a, a, a glorified magistrate's court. There was a Crown Court judge, and there were two magistrates either side. So this is what this was. There was no, there was no jury uh, present. The judge had a look at the passport. They passed it around each other for nearly, probably three or four minutes, trying to decide, I think, whether it was valid, if it was real, or maybe how they could proceed. Uh, and then the judge asked me, uh, are, is your date of birth 18th of October 1957? Whereupon I answered that uh, I was not in a position to say because I was not compass mentis or not uh, mentally aware of that date being my date of birth, and therefore it could only at the best be hearsay evidence as it was evidenced to me uh, on a document which I was not even aware that was in existence probably until the age of, let's say, 12 or 15 years of age. Uh, so I did not confirm that my date of birth was 18th of October 1957, and I didn't confirm that I was Peter Smith. All I was under the stated um, fact of that I was named Peter of England, representing Alan Peter Michael Smith, that I was also the chief executive officer of the company that represented the name, and also I was the general executor of the trust that was also administering the name Alan Peter Michael Smith with the date of birth, 18th of 10, 57, and also any monikers, handles, or nicknames, or internet uh, names that might be attached to that. Um, so I'm going to draw this part to uh, a, a close now, and then when we come back with the part two, we will then go into the nitty-gritty of what happened within the court and the cross-examination. Thank you. Part two coming up in a moment.